One of the unique aspects of the Appalachian Trail in Shenandoah National Park is its easy access to the famous Skyline Drive. That means lots of places where day hikers can stop off and just hike a few miles. And those longer day hikers or overnight backpackers can stop off at campgrounds for a hot shower or even a soft bed at one of the cabins or lodges. And where we usually see these backpackers and through hikers is getting a tasty snack or treat at one of the food concessioners in the park where you can get a yummy hot meal, frosty cold milkshake, which I don't know about you, but I think tastes all the more delicious after a really long, hard hike. Here we are at one of the mini trailheads in Shenandoah National Park for the world famous Appalachian Trail, or Appalachian Trail, or the AT for short. This trail boasts of legend, reverence, commitment, and I'm hoping by walking a little bit of this trail with me today, you'll be encouraged to come and step out here on this trail yourself. And whether you spend just a few hours or many months on this trail, the AT provides a unique opportunity for adventure and self-discovery. Before I start any hike, I like to make sure that I am prepared for what might come. And that means having a few things with me in my pack. So for instance, maybe some food, water, a map, but also uh, here in Shenandoah, especially in the spring and summer, I like to provide some uh, tick protection. Ticks are quite uh, common in this environment. So a few simple, easy things that I do to help prevent tick-borne illness is, um, I, I like to hike with gators when I can. It helps the creepy crawlies from crawling up, but also it hides my fashion forward statement of the socks pulled over the pants. One of the easiest things you can do though, even if you're hiking in shorts or sneakers, is after your hike, do a quick tick check. Just look for creepy collies on your skin, brush them off, and if they've already attached, then you just want to use tweezers or special tick removal equipment to remove those critters, and your friends and hiking buddies can help you do a quick overall check. Now that I know that I'm ready to begin my hike, um, I am going to hit the trail, so let's go hiking. So after you pass the trailhead, how do you know you're on the AT? For its entirety, there are these nice white blazes on trees and sometimes fence posts along the way to mark that you're on the AT to go along with those initial trailhead markers. And here in Shenandoah National Park, we also have yellow and blue blazing for horse trails and all of the other non-AT walking trails in the park. A lot of work goes into maintaining this trail. But it hasn't always been one long trail. Originally um, completed in 1937, the Appalachian Trail uh, stretches for over 2,000 miles and crosses 14 states. It's managed in a really interesting and unique cooperative partnership between the private and public sector and relies heavily on volunteer um, work crews that will come out and help maintain the trail. Um, as you can see behind me, there's a log check or a water bar here behind me to help keep the water off the trail. The um, uh, crew that largely is responsible for leading this maintenance effort for the Appalachian Trail is the Appalachian Trail Conservancy or the ATC. Here in Shenandoah National Park, they maintain the large, um, the 100 miles of the AT that stretch here through the park, along with a little of assistance with our park trail crews, which will help maintain the other 400 miles of trail here in the park. So much work and effort goes into maintaining the Appalachian Trail for the many people who choose to hike it. Every year, on average, two to three million people uh, complete at least a portion of the AT. And some of those hikers are through hikers, people who choose to hike the trail in its entirety all in one go. The full 2,000 miles, 2,180 or so miles of the AT typically takes the average through hiker between five and six months to complete. The first known through hiker to complete the AT successfully is Earl Schaefer. In 1948, he said he needed to hike the war out of a system. A veteran of the recent World War II, he chose to spend months on this trail as a meditation to help get some of that stressful um, memories and experiences out of the system. And a lot of people still choose that today. They go hiking to help 
relax, to meditate, to think. Um, it's a great way to get the stressors out of your system, to hit the trail. Many people have thru-hiked the trail since Earl Schaefer. The first known woman to complete successfully a thru-hike of the AT is Grandma Gatewood. In 1955, she completed a thru-hike of the AT. And with dozens of uh, children and grandchildren, she had plenty of reason to stay busy and off the trail. But she chose to hike the AT. When asked why, she said, because I wanted to which speaks volumes about her sense of independence and freedom. Having spent 30 years in a brutally abusive marriage, she successfully divorced her husband in 1940 and hit the trail in 1955. She completed the trail two more times in her lifetime and continues to be an inspiration to through hikers today. Even by just hiking a few miles, it's easy to see why someone might want to spend a little bit more time on this amazing trail. Famous for its rocky terrain and its endless green tunnels, it's also pretty famous for its expansive vistas. It's a beautiful place to spend a few hours or many months. Some of the recent through hikers on the Appalachian Trail weren't spending many months, but mere weeks on the trail. The fastest known time records um, continue to become shorter and shorter on the Appalachian Trail. From 2011 to 2015, Jennifer Farr Davis nabbed the fastest known time record for anyone, male or female, on the Appalachian Trail. She's a professional hiker um, and speaker and continues to inspire women to get out more into the out of doors. Women continue to be a minority here on the AT, where only about 25% of all through hikers are female. The fastest known time record uh, in 2017 was nabbed by Joe Stringbean McConaughey, who chose to do this uh, through hike um, unsupported, which means like most of the um, average through hikers, he carried most of his gear and supplies on his back and had to hike, uh, walk into local communities to get resupplies. He completed the trail in 46 days. Jennifer Farr Davis in 47 days. So a pretty tight record there. And um, in just uh, one year later, Carl Saab nabbed the fastest known time record. He did it in 41 days and completed the trail um, supported. So he had a little bit of assistance bringing out gear and resupplies to him so he could go a little bit lighter, a little bit faster. A dentist by trade, Carl Saab talks about how this whole through hiking and fast packing was simply a hobby that got out of hand. <laughs> Many of us have hobbies of hiking, walking, trail running, ultra marathoning, and the AT is a place where we can explore those recreational hobbies of ours. Um, today though, not a lot of the average through hikers are fast packers. About 4,000 people every year attempt a through hike of the AT, but only about 25% of them succeed. So about 1,000 people successfully complete the, the AT as a through hike. In 2016, Rahawa Hale became one of the few um, minority hikers to complete the trail. As a black woman in America hiking the AT, she's also um, brought a lot of attention about who this trail can be for. She is an avid um, social media, she has an avid social media following, a public speaker and a writer before she even hit the trail. She has brought a new voice to the hiker writer community. She was asked, um, she said, people ask me why I chose to hike the Appalachian Trail. And I tell them because it was the clearest shape of freedom for who I was before it. This sense of finding freedom on the trail continues to persist in the day hikers and through hikers uh, every day on the AT, where you get to choose how far you go, when you get up, what you want to see, and who you want to talk to. You even have the freedom to choose what you bring with you. Sometimes folks want to bring just a few things in their packs. Other times they're going to bring something special. If you come out and hike the AT, what will you bring on your hike? As we hike a little bit further up the trail, give that some thought. What are some things you're going to bring in your pocket or in your backpack? So did you think about the things that you might bring with you? On a hike like this, do you want to go alone? Really take that opportunity to find solitude? Are you going to bring a best friend? Along with who you're gonna bring, there's some other things that you should bring with you to have a fun and um, 
relatively uneventful hike. After all, you don't want this to be your very last hike you ever do. So being prepared for the unknown is a very great way to make sure that this is gonna be a pretty fun experience. And all long day hikers and backpackers and through hikers need to carry the 10 essentials. The 10 essentials are navigation, sun protection, insulation, illumination, fire, tools, hydration, um, nutrition, first aid, and emergency shelter. More specifically, navigation, that's going to be things like map, a compass, you might bring a GPS uh, unit, and whatever you bring, map, compass, GPS, uh, make sure you know how to use it so that when it's time to, when you need it, you can um, you can deploy it to, with success. Um, after uh, uh, navigation, we have sun protection. That means something like hat, sunscreen, long sleeves on a really sunny day if you're not going to have some good forest cover. Uh, insulation, an extra cover, extra layer of some kind. Depending on the weather, that might be a rain jacket, a fleece, something warm. And in the spring and fall, even if you start out on a hot day, uh, the weather can change instantly. So having a hat and gloves, things like that are gonna be really important. Illumination. You wanna bring some kind of light. I usually bring a headlamp with me, but even a flashlight is great. And if you're going overnight, it's good to have spare batteries for that, for that light. Fire. Now it's good to know if you can build a fire in the place that you're hiking. In some places, campfires are prohibited. Here in Shenandoah National Park, you can only have a fire at designated huts along the AT and in campgrounds. But you might need um, access to a flame to light your camp stove. So having some sort of form of fire is is crucial. Um, you're also going to want to bring uh, hydration, so some sort of water, um, liquids with you. Now, this isn't as tasty as a frosty milkshake, uh, just lukewarm water, but it's, uh, it's good enough. It's not milkshake good, but it's pretty good. It's good to have some snacks with you. You need nutrition. Now, sometimes that's high protein, things uh, high carb to get you on many, many miles. Other times, snacks. I hike with toddlers a lot, so my backpack is full of snacks. And I find that uh, even for us adults, it helps us get through that one extra mile. Bring a first aid kit with you. It doesn't have to be something fancy like this. Um, you can, it can even be a, just a Ziploc bag with some of those basic supplies. Here in Shenandoah, I'm gonna have my little tick removal kit, super cheap, you can buy it at your local drugstore. And you can find out online some of the basic things that you wanna bring in a first aid kit with you. And an emergency shelter. For backpackers and overnight hikers, they're already gonna have something like a tarp, a tent, they're gonna have a sleeping, um, um, a bivy of some kind with them. For long day hikers, folks that are out for at least five or 10 or 15 miles, um, we want to bring an emergency shelter, something very light, doesn't weigh us down, but can keep us warm should the weather change drastically. I have my 10 essentials here with me, but that's not gonna be the only thing that I'm gonna bring with me, right? I'm gonna bring something else, something that's important to me. Grandma Gatewood famously brought very few things on her through hike, um, packed into a denim sack thrown over her shoulder. In that sack, she uh, bring a, famously brung, br brought famously brought a plastic rain curtain or plastic shower curtain. It would have made good rain protection for her along the trail. Rahawa Hale brought a collection of books by some of her fa um, favorite black authors to help inspire her along the long journey. And then she shared these books at trail libraries, at huts and at stop off points along the way in hopes of inspiring others along the trail. What you bring with you will largely depend on what you need from the trail. Are you going out to find solitude, commune with nature? Are you going out for an adventure? Are you hoping to see bears and hike to hike uh, high rocky peaks? Um, do you need to hike something truly stressful out of your system? You might wanna bring a journal or something like that with you. If you're just out there to have fun, maybe you'll bring a nice fun hat with you. Whatever you bring, it will be personal and will make the trail all the more rewarding for you.
One of the other 10 essentials I didn't mention earlier is tools. And one of the tools I bring with me on most of my hikes is my smartphone. I don't usually use it as a phone. It's just a lightweight camera, as well as a place to take notes. But when I hike out to places where there is um, cell service or Wi-Fi, I can reach the outside world. So it's a little extra tool that I like to bring with me, but maybe you're gonna bring a multi-tool, a knife, something like that with you. What you bring with you really is gonna depend on the hike that you plan to hike and what you plan on doing. An easy stroll through the woods? Or are you hoping to find one of those epic vistas that we're famous for here in Shenandoah? It's easy to see why so many people want to hike a portion of the Appalachian Trail or spend many months on this trail. And you're gonna bring things with you that help make this adventure special to just you. Whether you spend just a few hours on this trail, an easy walk with your family, or many months, there is something unique and special here for you. If you're looking for these expansive vistas, solitude, um, a chance to get a little bit closer to nature or recreate and, and get stronger as a runner in, on the trails, this trail has something special for you. This place, this trail, it's for you, for all of you. You have a place here on this footpath for the people.